Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar. Haven't done one of these videos in quite a little while, but today I've actually had something near and dear to me kind of a uh kind of taken down and it's been a it's been a couple days and I've definitely felt a little bit of the uh, salty <laughs> salty surprise so to speak but for those of you who don't know uh emu paradise which was for about two decades ever since I well when I was young as shit was a website that you could download a lot of ROM files off of now the reason why it kind of affects me over there is because you know what I like playing some of the retro games here and there and a lot of them frankly aren't sold unless there's some third-party scalper involved selling that shit for like two thousand bucks a cartridge but I kind of wanted to get into some of the stuff over here now, before I preface this, I actually have to say I'm in support of Nintendo protecting any IP, particularly Nintendo's the one that we're bringing in particular over here. But really, it's kind of a lot of the legal teams that represent many of the big gaming firms out there that definitely want their ROMs taking off the Internet. I am in full support of people fighting for their copyrights and getting stuff removed if it, if they feel like piracy is a thing, because piracy is a thing. And, and, and in all in all respects, even though I have admitted to it, downloading ROMs here and there, I'm not going to be away and shying away from that. I'm not going to pretend to be some saint that always buys every single classic cartridge that I could. But for me, I'm in defense of a lot of these gaming companies when it comes time to protect their IPs. There is nothing wrong about this. And I think anybody that's saying that there is something wrong about it needs to recheck their position and say, you know what, they've made the game. They definitely have the right to say they can stop sale somewhat. But this is where <laughs> I sort of I, I sort of reached the tipping point of uh, of this whole situation. So Emu Paradise, for those of you who don't know, is a place that you could download Game Boy Advance ROMs, uh, you know, Genesis ROMs, PS2 ROMs even, and I think all the way up to like GameCube ROMs. I, I think anything past that that generation of gaming wasn't entirely available. Like, you couldn't go and get Wii games. I don't even think you could get Xbox ISO files. But PS2 and GameCube were becoming some of the more popular stuff on there. So you could get games like, you know, Final Fantasy X, but... Which, which you shouldn't do because there is a very well available HD version. I'll get into that as we begin. So basically, Emu Paradise, for those of you who don't know, is a site that, again, you can download ROMs and whatnot. And I was privy to it. I used it. But seeing it taken down, basically what happened just now, is uh, they've got some legal threats, and because of it, they decided to completely nuke all downloads available on Emu Paradise. So you can't get any game, you can't get any file, you can't even get a BIOS file anymore for the PS2 emulator. So at this point, it has been completely buttfucked by a legal team. And I don't know how long Emu Paradise will stand. Most of their traffic was obviously due to the downloads. I hope everything works out the best for that site. But Nintendo and pretty much any gaming firm involved has taken advantage to it. Now, I understand the argument a lot of these sites make a fair chunk of change, I guess you could say, hosting these ROMs that they're clearly violating copyrights of. And I can actually understand that entirely. I think Nintendo should get a cut of whatever. I mean, it's their content people come for. I get it. But the problem with taking down a lot of these ROMs and ISO files is that the aspect of game preservation sort of reaches a threat because... For me at least, and I said this in my emulator video, I necessarily don't care about emulating every single game out there. I often prefer the idea of preserving a lot of these games so that future generations or anybody that never got to experience that specific console can at least get a taste of it at some point in their life. It's just available out there. But the other reason why I kind of support sites like Emu Paradise to an extent is because Nintendo, and I'm mentioning Nintendo a lot and they're really the main sort of culprits available on this, but a lot of the gaming firms out there that release a lot of these old classic must-play games never follow up with giving a replacement about this game, about the games that they're taking down. For me, I'll give an example real quick. I have become a pretty, I guess, solid fan of the Yakuza series, and I've pretty much bought every single Yakuza game at this point but Yakuza 2. I'm buying Yakuza 2 at the end of the month because it's coming in a total remake remaster on the PS4, but Yakuza 2 is a game that has been available for the PS2. It's unfortunately rare, and the problem is, at the time when I was playing the Yakuza games, I started with Zero, played Yakuza Kiwami, which is the first game's remake, when it came time for Yakuza 
two, I had the option of paying like a hundred dollars to buy some gypped copy of the game just because I just because I could have an official copy of the title or go on Emu Paradise and get to play the game. Now, I'm still going to buy the game, obviously, but at the time, you know, I thought to myself, if I'm going to pay a hundred dollars, I'm not going to give it to some fucking scalper that's wiping this game with his ass. I'm actually just going to play this game and because I'm not getting the option to buy it directly from Sega because there's nothing saying that I wouldn't. I mean, I bought Yakuza 0, I bought Yakuza 1. I like the series. Fuck, if Yakuza 2 was on the marketplace, at least for me, for like, what, five, six bucks, I'd love to fucking buy it. The problem is... I did not have the option, so I couldn't get it as a PS2 classic, I couldn't do anything with it as far as my knowledge went. So, for me, I actually had to go out of my way to, 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 to get some ROM so I can continue my playthrough. Or, I guess, wait for a remake that I, that I had to wait at the time a year for. So you get the point. There are certain general uses where, yeah, you can see why someone would download an ISO or a ROM to play the series that, unfortunately, they can't easily access nowadays. Now, for something like, say, Metroid Prime or any game like, I don't know, Legend of Zelda, whatever, so on and so forth. Let's pick something like, yeah, Metroid Prime, earlier example, Metroid Prime 1, which is a pretty solid game. Unfortunately, if I want to play it nowadays, I don't recall there being any solid way to get it. I think that's actually a terrible example. I think it's digitally available on Wii U, so you might have the option there. But basically, when a game company goes out of their way to remove a certain game from download because, of course, of piracy reasons, I think they should always go out of their way if you're going to sue or take down a site for something like this, you must, and I repeat, you must give some replacement for the user. The only reason people have to resort to this shit, guys, is because scalpers out here ruin retro gaming for a lot of people. They price this shit so far up the ass, it's out of reach of most people. They treat these games like they're on the holy fucking grail. A lot of people only really got to play Earthbound because it was on a ROM. Scalpers priced that game so far up the ass that we were ending up paying like 400 bucks a copy. Most people don't have 400 bucks, or even if they do, they're not going to give $400 to some fucking copy of Earthbound that's probably going to oxidize in a year or two anyways, if you can just get the ROM file of it at that point. With things like the SNES Classic, yeah, I can get the argument then. Pay 60 bucks or what, 70 bucks to get that game on its own little SNES Mini? That's fine. 70 bucks is okay with the whole collection of games. But when you're paying 400 bucks to a fucking used marketplace where the developer doesn't get a single cent of that, then... Is that really any different from piracy in any situation? I don't think so, at least from a point of monetary standpoint, which a lot of these companies aim for. When it comes time for taking down a website, I'm okay with you protecting the IP. I don't give a shit. I think you're totally within your right to do it. But if you're going to take down, fuck, I don't know, Resident Evil Gaiden for the Game Boy Color, then anybody that wants to play Resident Evil Gaiden, you should fucking provide them some way, some service to get that game for a reasonable price. You know, some way to get those games. That would be fine. That's all I think gamers are asking. Nobody's against paying a fair price for a game. I I could pay 20 bucks for Earthbound. I think that game is worth a $20 price tag. I think it's fine. And because of things like the Virtual Console, in my opinion, you shouldn't need to pirate Earthbound. You can get that game on their Virtual Console for a certain amount of price that I think is fair for the developers and, you know, for Nintendo. But if... A game company isn't providing that game as a replacement and instead decide to blanket take down these things, then I have somewhat of a problem. Because at that point, you take away something that could have been accessed by someone, something that people could be willing to pay for, but you just don't offer it for the most part. There is just no alternative other than illegally downloading it by definition. And I think that's sort of the issue with somewhat of the copyright situations as well. A lot of these people aren't providing simple alternatives. So because of that, we're forced to never play a game or pay up the ass to a lot of people in a third market that, frankly, are profiting off of nostalgia in any way, shape, or form. So I know I kind of went off a lot of tangents over here, but really, I don't want to extend this video more than I kind of have to. There's a couple points I have to make, and that's about it. I'm in defense of a lot of these companies doing what they do when it comes to taking down a website for their IP. But fucking... Provide an alternative. That's all I ask. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like it, dislike it. I am out.